Well, the Bureau of Statistics today has said that it will begin monthly reporting of inflation from October this year, bringing Australia into line with other nations that include the United States, the UK, Canada, Japan and Europe. Now, there has been criticism, including from the Reserve Bank, that quarterly inflation statistics have caused Australia's interest rate settings to be behind the economic trend. Joining me now, Dr David Gruen, Chief Statistician and Head of the Bureau of Statistics. David, thank you so much for your time today. Tell me about the motivation to create this monthly series for inflation in Australia? So, Ross, uh, this has, in a sense, been on our wish list for quite some time. But if you go back uh, a few years, it was prohibitively expensive to imagine producing a monthly CPI. Why was that? Just explain. Uh, because um, it requires collecting more of the data more frequently, and that's expensive, uh, especially with the techniques that we used to use. Well, to in collect... other words, people going out into stores. Yeah, so that was... The, we used to uh, have um, our employees wandering around supermarkets with... Um, a pen and paper, at least, you know, roughly speaking, yes. and writing down prices. Right. So, in the case of supermarkets, we now get scanner data from the major supermarket chains, de-identified, but we get information on every transaction in the major four supermarket chains. So, it's more cost-efficient to collect that data these days. So, this makes a monthly reporting series for inflation you know, sort of feasible. Were you conscious of the fact that Australia was producing quarterly data when a lot of those other countries were producing monthly data? Yes. Most of the world, uh, certainly the advanced world, produces uh, monthly data. Every country in the G20 other than ourselves produces monthly CPI data. Uh, so we were conscious of that. And as I say, it's been on our wish list for a fair while, but, um, but, but it, we haven't been able to action it until now. And what about the exhortations from people such as Philip Lowe, Governor of the Reserve Bank, who himself has decried the fact that we don't have this monthly inflation data? Did that influence your decision? So, uh, I mean, as I say, this is something that we've wanted to do, but... Um, uh, and the, 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 the fact that inflation was beginning to rise uh, uh, well above its normal levels in Australia earlier in the year uh, made us have a much more careful look about at, at whether we could do this. But you yourself have worked in Treasury. You've worked in Reserve Bank. Yes. You would know the danger of being behind the curve with interest rate settings... True. ..if you don't have the information sitting in front of you. True, true. Uh, but, uh, um, I mean, I, I, I don't want to overplay the benefits of having a monthly CPI because it will be more volatile. But um, there's no question that, especially at a time when inflation is moving, uh, uh, it's very valuable to have more timely information. OK, so then we can actually show people what you put out today, and that was a series, a, a, a chart, that shows what inflation would have been reported on a quarterly basis, which you have done, 6.1% yes. for the quarter. Yes. But what it would have been had it been monthly. And we can show that chart and show people what it would have been. So just explain the difference. OK, so... Um, um, uh, the difference is that if you're looking, for instance, at annual inflation and you're looking at uh, qu from quarterly data, then you would be comparing the June quarter of, of 2021 with the June quarter of 2022. Uh, so that's that last point, the last circle there is the 6.1% is the inflation rate that yes. you just quoted, which is the uh, increase in the price in the CPI from the June quarter of, 20, of, of 2021 to the June quarter of 2022. Sure. The final monthly point there that your arrow shows, which is an inflation rate of 6.8%, is the increase in the CPI from the month of June 2021 to the month of June 2022. So that perhaps gives us a better indication that inflation was moving. And so really it was a situation where Treasury, Reserve Bank are making forecasts about where inflation might be. But of course, this actually is giving that empirical evidence on a more timely manner to those agencies that require it. That's right. It's important to be aware that we we've called this a monthly CPI indicator because we are not updating all the prices in the in the full basket every month. We're so going, why we're, not? Why are you not doing that? Uh, b b uh, constra um, constraints on on our resourcing. Yes. Um, but we judge we, we're going to update about two thirds. Uh, the details are in the information paper. But we're going to update about two thirds of the index every month. 
uh, and we judged that that was, and with based on the research that we released today, that that provided, uh, that that was fit for purpose to give you a sense of where inflation was going. And they're the most volatile prices. They Those are. that you consider are going to move in a, in a more volatile manner as well. And they're the ones we collect on a monthly or more frequent basis. Some things we collect on a weekly basis. Yes, I'll tell you what, Dr David Grew, it's so fascinating this, and of course gives more information to our central bank and to lots of other agencies as well. Many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Ross. Well,